Hey everybody, it is the Honey Badger and today we are going to be installing our Weber carburetor that just arrived. Now I'm excited for this one because everyone I know on the forums or on Facebook talking about this in the Nissan 720 group says that the Weber carburetor upgrade is one of those things that they wish they would have done right away. Well, I'm doing it fairly early in at least owning the vehicle because I've heard the same thing now. Um, the guy even bought it from said that the Weber carburetor he heard was great. So uh, we definitely want to do this. I think the current carburetor just needs replaced anyways, or it, it needs maintenance because it has its own issues. So this should just be overall a good just gain in general when it comes to probably a little bit of performance. Uh, the current carb just gets atrocious fuel economy because I think something's wrong with it, not just because this pickup doesn't get great fuel economy. They should do okay, but current one's really bad. So we should see a lot of positive gains from this. This is the first carbureted vehicle I've actually ever like worked on myself. I've been around carbureted vehicles uh, for previous companies I worked for, but I, I've never actually dug in and worked on them. I'm so used to fuel injection on all my other vehicles. So um, I don't think that's gonna make a huge difference, but uh, it's just something that I'm going to be learning a little bit about today, which is also exciting. So let's dive in, see what all comes off, see what all needs to go on and see how everything turns out in the end. So I just was walking past the side of the truck and I noticed this little puddle underneath it and it's not wet out. So I get underneath and we have uh, what appears to be a few leaks. So I'm actually going to button things up real quick, throw it all back together, head over to my mechanic buddy's place who's going to help me out um, with figuring out if this is just power steering or if this is also brake fluid. So we're going to go ahead and get this kind of worked on and fixed because uh, that's not good. And hopefully when I come back, we'll also have a carburetor on because I'm going to take it with. So uh, hopefully when I'm back, uh, we can go over the carb on there. A few moments later. All right, we are back and everything is put together. We got our carburetor on, but before we talk about it in a moment, first we need to address why I left and went to my friends. So here we have our power steering or our brake and power steering fluid. Um, fun fact, if you look down below all that rust and all that peeling paint down there, and there's some fresh bare metal and more paint that's bubbling away, we had quite the leak. And that's why there was stuff all over the floor of my garage. So we got that all taken care of, had a big help from a bud over there, and uh, got things sealed up with our a little JB Weld was used to fix some things because we didn't have the correct parts, but JB Weld, when you have certain leaks, will function good enough. So um, we aren't leaking, um, but yeah, definitely had a uh, power steering leak and actually a little bit of a brake line leak too. So those are sorted, and now the carburetor is on. But before we talk about the carburetor's new performance and how fun that is, let's go see what came off. And there we are, a pile of parts. It is kind of crazy. I'm glad I definitely took this over and had my buddy help me with this. Uh, uh, this is insane. So obviously the old carburetor came off quite dirty. Um, probably a lot of issues. I had some sticky throttle stuff. Um, some of this is just not in as good a condition as it was clearly. Boots are ripped on it. Um, it's a bit filthy and dirty and obviously really dirty still. Um, tons of vacuum lines. You just, I probably would have underestimated the amount of vacuum lines that was coming off this thing, but he started helping me once I had it pulled off. He's like, oh yeah, all this vacuum shit is gone. You don't need that anymore. That's old emission stuff. In fact, you know, old emissions crap that's not needed anymore. There's even more we could take off. Didn't do the EGR delete. Um, maybe in the future I'll do that. Obviously more stuff for the throttle. This is unnecessary. I don't even know what this is technically for. I know it comes off the end of the actual box. It goes right there and it goes down towards the exhaust, but it doesn't like hook up with the actual exhaust. I don't know if that's just for like hot airflow to get into your intake i really don't know we got more vacuum lines too um off the actual just you know filter so and then more lines and then more shit, and then tons of old hardware that it's no longer need so tons comes off um dare i call this also some weight reduction not that it matters in a truck that weighs as much as this does but it's interesting nonetheless so that's everything that comes off and yeah, I would have definitely stumbled around with that for a little bit because uh, I would have never thought that much stuff comes off. But some of the stuff's obviously pretty old and not necessary with the new carburetor. And so far, that is a dream. So let's go look and talk about that a little bit. 
And there you have it. We have the carburetor on as we saw. And oh my God, guys, the performance is insane. It is legit feeling twice as fast as it previously did. So if I had to take an estimate or a guesstimate of how fast the zero to 60 time was of this thing previously, I'd say probably above 15 seconds, maybe closer to 20. It was crazy slow. Leaving a stoplight, I'd feel bad for the people behind me because we ain't going anywhere fast. And trying to pass cars wasn't possible. You'd already have to be moving at speed and just they'd have to be going slower. That's how you'd pass. Now, I actually passed someone merging onto the highway. They weren't getting over. I put the foot down and this thing kicks down and goes. You get a little bit of a kick from it and it opens up. You can hear it just open up completely and pull in more air and probably spit in more fuel. So it is way faster and it feels a million times better. This is easily probably gonna be one of the best modifications I make to the pickup. So um, big fan. Now the big thing I've noticed is though, how freaking dirty and gross the rest of the engine bay is. So we're gonna be cleaning it up. Everything needs a detail. And I noticed this reservoir has a hole in it. And then I came over here and I was looking closer at this one and I was looking at how close this crack was. And I was like, well, that crack, if I push on that, that's a hole too. Cause I mean, yeah, that's a hole. So I have some new reservoirs on the way. We'll get those replaced in an upcoming video. Clean that up a little bit, clean up the rest of this engine bay. And honestly, this will be looking great. Cause right now that Weber stands out as something that looks way nicer than everything else in there. So we're gonna clean the engine bay up. Uh, obviously we've got the outside of the truck we are working on and cleaning that up too. Um, we have a lot of our sanding done actually now. Video on that soon. A lot of the rust is gone from the vehicle and some test painting has happened. Um, but yeah, we are, we are moving forward and getting some stuff done. And this right here, that's one of the best mods period. So if you're looking into that, you have an older pickup or one of these, definitely get one. It is so much nicer. It also just looks a million times better too. Um, so yeah, this was a huge success. Maybe we'll go and I'll uh, see if I can show you the comparison because I can pretty much manipulate the throttle to show you what it was like to drive it. And now what happens when you kick down and how much more response I get. So maybe we'll go for a quick ride. All right. So we're just putzing around right now. We're going to get out of the neighborhood. I'm on a gimbal, so if my gimbal starts to just swing around, it's because that's what it does. It likes to pretend like it's smooth, but then it'll smooth you out of the frame. So we're just driving out of the neighborhood right now. Um, and yeah, we'll just get the kick down because the kick down is really, that's what's brand new. Um, it's a little bit quicker when you're just naturally accelerating on the throttle, nothing like crazy, crazy, but you get like a legit kick down now. So like, I mean, look out squirrel. So like right now, if I'm just cruising a little bit, like this is pretty much, like normal acceleration sounded like this. And now kick downs like this. And you like actually start to move. So yeah, it's a lot faster. Classic stop signs, you gotta stop for them. It's a weird merging crossover. So I have to like look behind me to see if cars are coming. So no more cars from the right. Come on, no cars from the left. All right, so this is like normal acceleration and now you get kick down. Sounds a little angrier too. And there you go, quick little drive. It's just, it's night and day. It's so much quicker. I mean, again, we're not going for speed, but the ability to drive it and pass someone's amazing. So that's gonna be it for today's video. Leave a like on it if you like the content and subscribe for more future content. Make sure that bell notification's on so you know when an upload goes live on the channel. And thanks for watching. I'll see all of you guys in the next video.